one, and then we do the add and we get our three. Five seconds. Okay, now the ARM manual makes an unfortunate naming convention. It calls registers that are needed. You know, if I drew vertical columns here, each of these would be a clock cycle. Right? This happens in a clock cycle that's different than this clock cycle, that's different than this clock cycle, that's different than this clock cycle. It's a one clock cycle separation to go from the shift to the ALU, and another clock cycle to go from the ALU to the SAT. Another clock cycle to go from the SAT to the right back. That's Python. Right? So anything that's needed in this clock cycle, the shift or the address, or registers that are needed in those stages are referred to as early registers. This is a register that's needed in the same clock cycle? It's a register that's needed in the clock cycle before the ALU or the MIM stage. We'll never need anything prior to that. Right? These are when we're still reading registers at this point, decoding, that kind of stuff. So this is the earliest point at which we would need a value that's produced elsewhere in the data path. Okay. So why is that an unfortunate term? Well, the term early isn't all that bad. It means we need it earlier than normal. The, the unfortunate naming convention is it calls everything else that's needed here a late register. So in terms of registers, you're either early or you're late. You're never just right on time. Okay. There's no regular registers. Um, I, I prefer to use the term regular usage. This is the common case here. We need things in front of the ALU. These types of instructions aren't very common. They can happen, but they're not very common. So, 16.1 uh, talks about these two that I've mentioned, and then there's a, a few others that are listed on 16.6. Uh, And those of you watching the video and in this room, study these. Print them out like I've done. I did this whole lecture with two pages of notes. I only looked at one of them. That's where the important stuff is. This concludes my catch-up. This brought us through Wednesday and Friday of last week. So. If you feel a bit like a deer in the headlights, it's because I just dumped a whole lot of information on you quite a bit more rapidly than the regular flow of lecture. So stand out of the way so the camera can see the whole way. Questions? Yes? Can you again review why it is five cycles for that instruction on the left side of the board? So for this sequence here where we have the early register. Yeah. Okay. I think the key is understanding that we start counting for the load when it enters this box. Okay. Why? Well, because this is where we're going to start getting the data that we actually want to load from. There has been no delays or any perturbation in the flow of the instructions until the load starts to get to here. Okay. So when the load is in the MIM1 stage, the add instruction is waiting at the shift stage. That's just the regular flow. They're separated by a clock cycle. Right? So this one's first. This one's one clock cycle behind it. Okay. So we keep the add here and the load here. The add stalls. It waits. 
the load instruction advances from MEM1 to MEM2, that's one clock cycle. And then advances from MEM2 to the right back, that's two cycles. Still no forwarding. I have to wait until the end of the right back stage before we can send the result to the shift where the ad needs it. Yeah, that's three, three, clock cycles, three, oh, three clock cycles have expired at this point. Now we have the result from the load, so we can implement the shift, four clock cycles, and then we can actually do the add, five clock cycles, before the result of this instruction is available. That's what we determine the latency by. Okay. In a second, I'm going to stop the camera.